Tell me what you think of when you hear the word Boston. Maybe you think of a smoker outside of a Papa Gino's ranting about how Tom Brady was framed for Deflategate? Perhaps an overweight bartender trudging through the snow to meet his friends at a mediocre seafood place? I can assure you, you probably don't think of luxury penthouse suites and men in tuxedos handing out champagne. For whatever reason, the most luxurious White Star Liner in its time was reserved for making trips to Boston from Liverpool. Now, I'd mock Liverpool too, don't get me wrong, but their contributions to music and the fact that their citizens are called Liverpudlians is enough for me to give them a temporary pass. The RMS Republic was one of the most gorgeous White Star Liners of the early 20th century, most known for her incredible accommodations and terrible History Channel documentary. You know it's gonna be good when they call this single funnel liner Titanic's sister ship in the description. She was not even her running mate. RMS Republic was christened the SS Columbus when launched in February of 1903, built by Harland and Wolfe for the Dominion Line. She made her first crossing the following October, but not under White Star. She sailed her first three voyages under the Dominion Line flag, a corporate minimalist Arkansas flag, until being sold with three other liners to White Star in 1904. White Star named her after the SS Republic of 1872, sister of the first Oceanic. Although the Republic was intended for use on the Liverpool to Boston route, after her first trip there under White Star, she sailed for the Mediterranean. She could only take so much though, and after only 11 months of making trips to Boston, she was swapped over to the White Star Line's Mediterranean to New York route. Essentially, her eastbound crossings would take exceptionally rich Americans on vacation to Italy, and her westbound crossings would have her packed with third-class Italian immigrants. Now, her first class was really something, having your standard library, saloon, lounge, and smoking room, but apparently 10 times as luxurious than on other liners. Her lounge, directly connected to her promenade, was particularly favored by her wealthier passengers, as well as her saloon that sat 200. It held some of the most intricately carved ornamental wood paneling of any ship, along with an extra fancy glass dome topping it all. She could accommodate 280 first-class passengers and 250 in second class, with a whopping 2,300 third. And third is where the real profit laid for White Star. Unfortunately, she could only run this Mediterranean route in winter and would be put back to Boston in the summer, the route she was actually the flagship of. She was a highly profitable ship for the time. But much like Eschelus the Tragedian, who died from an eagle dropping a tortoise on his bald head, most of her notoriety comes from the story of her demise. In the early morning hours of January 23, 1909, in dense fog off the Nantucket Shoals, the Republic heard the whistle of an oncoming ship and turned hard a port to clear the way. Her efforts were in vain, however, as the SS Florida of the Lloyd Line slammed into her amidships. Now I know you'll get a kick out of this. She's got a fancy Marconi wireless radio on board, meaning the Republic has the unique opportunity to send out a CQD distress call for the first time in history. Because of this technological marvel, there were only six casualties in total three on the Florida during the collision, and two immediate deaths of sleeping passengers on the Republic, with one who died due to complications days later. The Republic listed to port, but the SS Florida, which wasn't in any real danger, was able to pull away and take on some of Republic's fleeing passengers. A U.S. revenue cutter Gresham pulled up to take on some survivors, which was a big favor to the Florida, which was overflowing with 900 rescued Italians. A lot of these people would end up transferred to the SS Baltic, who pulled up that evening. The Lucania and the SS New York showed up a little later, but by then the Republic was gearing up for the Gresham to tow her, which failed as the Republic sank stern first. Her wreck is rumored to be loaded with gold, and that's why so many expeditions have been made to try and access her cargo hold. None have succeeded. They think now it's not practical or feasible to access it. There you go, the RMS Republic. Boston has really gone downhill without her. So what did we learn? The RMS Republic was an incredible ship sent to an incre- well sent to a city. And even now, they say if you stand by Boston Harbor and listen real close, you can still hear the crying of her lost passengers. Or perhaps it's the drunken Red Sox fans crying over their last place spot in the East Division.